More times than not, if you pick up a weapon and try to use it in self-defense, you better have a damn good reason before you get yourself locked up and worse. So I'm often asked, well, you know, like, what are your go-tos or what would you use? Or Kiyoshi, you know, you're, a, you're into all that stuff. What would you pick as your melee weapon? I don't know, but if you've seen Grammy wield one of these things, if you never had an Italian grandma, woo! <laughs> so today, we're talking about five weapons that you would use in a melee for self-defense purposes. Stick around. What's up, Warriors? It's Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training, here to share with you some warrior skills and drills that anyone can learn and everyone should know. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and thanks for stopping by. If you already follow us on social media and that's how you find your way over to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops and you get all sorts of cool content from here as well. So the first thing we should do is define a melee, right? So check this out. This is like the uh, dictionary.com app uh, definition. A melee is a confused hand-to-hand -hand fight or struggle among several people. The words that, uh, you know, came up that, that I thought were like most common for this type of application were brawl, ruckus, tussle, and a scuffle. Now, every time I think of like a melee, and I've been in one or two in my day, and uh, I I've had to defend myself against more than one person more than one time. Um, I've also had it where there was more than one of us and just we were outnumbered type of thing. I don't know if I've ever used a weapon to defend myself. I was always confident in my martial arts skills that I was able to. I've defended myself against a weapon. Um, police job, I've always had my, my firearm as like the, the equalizer. And uh, oftentimes that, that's a good way to like, you know, uh, de-escalate a situation, believe it or not. Um, but I teach martial arts for a lot, a lot of years. And I do a lot of weapons training personally. And I do a lot of weapons teaching. Uh, we do it for like defense against the weapon. Like if you, you didn't have a weapon and the bad guy did, what do you do? And um, and then we do a lot of like if you were able to take that weapon from the bad guy and you needed to still use it, you should have some sort of understanding on how to use it, right? Now the next thing is there's a lot of videos and a lot of information out there about like the post-apocalyptic, uh, without rule of law, the end of the world as we know it, and like roving you know, mobs of, of marauders and cannibals and... I'm not saying that's not gonna happen or can't happen, but, uh, you know, I like to go down that rabbit hole too and, geez, what would I do in that situation? But I'm also a little bit of a realist and, you know, most of my students are like, I, I can't even think about that stuff. I need, like, what if, like, I get jumped outside my house, I get jumped outside the restaurant or the bar or whatever, what do I do, right? You catch me daydreaming about like the rabbit hole I went down last night when I couldn't sleep and I'm watching about zombie apocalypse and you'll find Kiyoshi swinging lightsabers because man, I always wanted to be a Jedi and the purple is like, well, like the good side and the bad side. So it's kind of like both, I think. Or are we talking like, uh, you know, something out of like The Last Samurai or uh, Pulp Fiction, you know, two handed like, yeah, let me get him. Zed's dead, baby. Book of Eli. You know, I'm big on that guy. Come on now, come on. Wolverine, one of my favorites. Second maybe only to Hulk. So, you know, uh, Thor, badass with his hammer. You know, I couldn't find my wooden nutchucks. I think they're at the dojo, so I swiped my sons. He's only six, so he's still got the padded ones. But uh, big Bruce Lee fan, that's a good one. Uh, gangs in New York type of like just Old school brass knuckles, these are like a novelty one. They're, they're light, they're, I don't think they're very dangerous, they're more of a paperweight. And of course, Grammy's wooden spoon. Instead of me giving you a, a whole list of weapons that are like, not very likely, like you can't walk around with this thing, you're gonna get yourself locked up, you know? And this thing, maybe in some places you're allowed to have this, but I don't know, that, that's got bad news written all over it. This thing, where the hell are you gonna put this, right? So what I did was instead of giving you five specific weapons, we're gonna go over five different categories of weapons that um, if you kind of think along these lines, it's more of an outline. And uh, hopefully this will help you be able to look around wherever you are, whether you're at the soccer field, the restaurant, church, wherever you are, like, hmm, if I had to defend myself against more than one person right now and I needed to grab a weapon, which weapon would I grab? Or what kind of weapon would I grab? Let's check this out. But I want to give a little bit of a precursor to all of this stuff. Hey, if you ever had to defend yourself against 
anybody, like you thought somebody was gonna hurt you, your first option should always be run. Especially if there's gonna be more than one person. Especially if that person has a weapon. The first thing, first thing, no matter what scary thing is coming your way, your first thought process should be, how do I get out of here? Like, run for it. And if you can't run, the second thing you should be thinking is, how do I hide? Like, how do I, there's concealment and there's cover. Cover will protect you, concealment will hide you. In this case, concealment will do. How do I just like hide so that the bad guy don't see me? Hopefully the bad guy or the dangerous thing passes and I can find my escape. While I'm hiding, I should be thinking, all right, where is the, the scary thing happening and where's my escape? So if the scary thing is that way, I'm looking, how do I run for it that way? And where's my escape that way? If all else fails, you can't run and you can't hide and you're forced to fight. Fight isn't like Conan the Barbarian, crush your enemies, see them driven before you and hear the lamentation of their women. Well, it, it shouldn't be that. It should be like, how do I like stun and run? How do I make a break for it, right? So the next part of this is when we talk about using weapons for self-defense purposes, again, you got to understand that as soon as you introduce a weapon into a self-defense scenario, if you cannot maintain control of that weapon and the bad guy gets it, there's a good chance that they will use that on you. So before you take something out, you got to be pretty sure that you're, you're intent on using it. And if you're not, if you have some sort of tool to use for self-defense on your person, you keep that as like the ace in your sleeve, you know, that you only take it out if you absolutely positively have to and you're going to use it, if that makes sense. All right, so the first category of weapons we're going to call long range. So now, when I refer to long-range weapons, and again, this is how I teach it to my martial arts students, my prepping students, and uh, you know, some of the survivalists, like they want to kind of cross-train and, and, and do other stuff. A long-range weapon is going to be something that you kind of hold with two hands, and you can use like either to poke, to strike, um, you know, you could reach a little further away, probably outside of their reach or their range with whatever thing they're holding, and maybe they could kind of like keep more than one person away type of thing. Now again, you could use something like anything that has a handle. So whether it's a mop, a broom, a shovel, uh, an oar, or like a, like a paddle or something. You were like in, you know, Dick's Sporting Goods or something. You know, but you could also use like the pool cue that you would see in a, a you know, a pool hole, a bar, wherever. You could also pick up like a long, like we just had a crazy windstorm. It's still kind of windy. And as I look along my block, I just see like sticks and branches laying down. Now, it would be, have to be something that you could pick up and wield, but if you could pick it up and crack somebody with it, that'll do. Another idea would be like, maybe not something that you might hold that's rigid, but if you took off your backpack and you had to like start flailing that thing around with one or two hands, depending on how heavy your backpack is, that would work too. You could use that as a shield too, like you kind of hold it up and hide behind it, hold it by the strap, crack somebody with it. You could use like a baseball bat, something like, you know, a sword? Yeah, I guess, but something that is even like where you're not holding two hands in the middle of it, but two hands on one end and swinging it like a sword or like a bat or like a golf club or something along those lines. Long range. The second category is going to be mid-range. So mid-range is going to be something that you can hold with one hand and wield, maybe two, but it's going to be something that you hold with one hand that's got some length to it that you could like kind of like keep somebody away with. So again, we got a video on how to use a stick for self-defense. But uh, maybe not Thor's hammer, but a hammer would work. A, you know, maybe not Grammy's wooden spoon, but a wooden spoon or some sort of cooking utensil like a spatula. You know, if you've, if you've had any sort of training or, uh, you know, you at least got, kind of go down the rabbit hole and watch some other videos of like, wow, I, I, didn't, I would never have thought to like that you could kind of twirl it, right? It's not just like hit the guy with the stick type of thing. You know, there are ways to like kind of put, apply pressure by holding onto this, wrap it around somebody's neck. There's a lot of techniques. so you'll be limited by your knowledge of how to use something like this, right? So again, that long stick, I've practiced using just the stick alone. I've done it with, there's a spear, on, a, a, a blade on one end or a point, use it like a spear. I've used it where it's flat on one end, like a oar that you would use for like for padding, paddling your uh, like a boat or something like that. When it comes to mid range, anything like a pipe, club, baton, uh, a wine bottle, you know, a, a, a liquor bottle, an umbrella, Something that you would hold that's about this length, maybe a little shorter, maybe a little bit longer, but something you could hold with one hand and wield. Now we were talking about using a backpack to take it off and use it like a shield. Your purse or fanny pack, you could take that off and swing it with one hand similar to nunchucks, a dog leash. So like I have, I always carry some sort of a cordage in my pocket. So like for me, 
instead of taking off my belt, which that's another option, being able to take off, you know, if you carry cord, you know, my, my uh, survivalist buddies, everybody's got like some sort of six foot length of utility cord. Could you take that out and use it to grab somebody or somebody has a weapon? Could you trap the weapon? Could you wrap it around somebody and, and go to work on them while you're trying to fend off their buddy or whatever? It's another option. And again, all these things kind of fall into that mid range. All right, so the next one up is close range. And um, a lot of the stuff I'm showing you, like I know yeah, I'm in New York, like this is like a felony just even having this thing. There's a law enforcement officer exemption, so I guess a cop could have it, they just can't use it, but you don't get in trouble for having it or something like that. But um, again, this one's a novelty one. I know I have a real set somewhere, I have to look for them. But uh, you get in a lot of trouble for something like this. But along these same lines, when we talk about close range, it's always going to be something like that you could pick up in one hand and like there's no range to it. Like I would pick up like my steel coffee cup, or whatever this is made of, and crack somebody with that. Um, if you were like pinned on the ground and like you, all you could reach was a rock or a brick or something and crack somebody with that, I mean, again, your life's got to be in danger for you to be able to justify using that type of force on somebody. Um, more than one attacker and you're like, oh my God, like let me grab anything. Again, going back to like a billiard room, picking up a a, a pool or billiard ball or a, a lock that you might use to lock up your bicycle or, or your, uh, your locker at the gym or something like that. But any sort of thing that you could pick up that's like baseball, softball, um, something small that you could pick up in your hand and crack somebody with, right? Those are going to be your close range weapons. And again, there's plenty of that stuff, man. Any way you're sitting down, like you could pick up a book and do a number on somebody if you're confident in holding that thing and wailing them with it or blocking or striking certain points on the body with it. Again, it's, it's about part of it is your creativity and part of it is like you're, you know, kind of delving a little bit into like the warrior within, you know, if you really had to and your life depended on it or worse, if the life, life of your like spouse or your parent or your child was in danger, like a lot of people are more willing to fight to protect somebody else than they are willing to, to protect themselves. And I see that uh, in the dojo all the time. Uh, people that are kind of like shy and timid or whatever, I'm like, what would you do if someone's trying to hurt your mom or your dad or your brother, or your sister or your kid? They're like, oh my God, I would kill them. Well, you gotta learn how to tap into that for you, defending you, because if you, <laughs> if you don't make it through, how are you gonna protect anybody else? Close range. Category four. Now, category four is sharp, pointed or bladed or edged objects. So of course, like, you know, I carry a, a, a folding knife. So, I mean, I use it as a tool, but could I use it for self-defense? If I had to, of course. Um, if you don't carry a folding knife, could you like, like a writing utensil, like if you have a pen in your hand or a pencil, could you stick somebody in the eye with a, or like a pencil? Yeah, if you had to. Um, any sort of like, if you were, again, sitting at your kitchen table and somebody came in, I'm sure you have a fork. <laughs> Fork would work, knife would work. Uh, if, you're, if you're sitting at your desk, whether you're in your school or office, and like scary thing happens, and you like all hell breaks loose, you'd pick up the pointy thing, and the pointy end goes into the other guy. Of course, there's more to it than that, but again, we're going into that cat, that next category. So you have that long range, mid range, close range. Now we're going to go for things that are. Would that would a uh, sword fall in there? Absolutely. Would a big knife, a little knife, a throwing star, a Wolverine claw, all those things. But again, wherever you are, like the things that you don't, unless you carry this thing on you, you gotta be able to like, from your environment, find something that you could use. Could you pick up a pointy stick and, and stab somebody or slice somebody with it? Absolutely. Again, creativity. You gotta kinda like be of the mindset. Hmm. If right now in my car, what could I grab inside my car? Uh, at my desk, uh, outside like at, at the bus stop waiting for my kid to come, to get, get off the bus or whatever. Again, you just gotta be a little bit creative and kind of get yourself in the, that warrior mindset of just always looking for like, God forbid, if I had to, what would I do? And category five, projectile. So now when it comes to projectile weapons, um, that could be like having a pocket full of loose change and throwing at somebody to distract them. Projectile doesn't necessarily have to be um, with the intention of injuring them, but maybe to stun them or distract them so that you could then hit them with something else or run for it. Um, I remember like, Back in the days of hanging out in a bar and they were like, you know, chips or nuts and pretzels or whatever on the bar, and like just taking that thing and be able to dump it in somebody's face and then crack them. Uh, if you're a smoker and you have a cigarette in your hand, flicking a cigarette in somebody's face, cracking them. You wear a baseball cap, take the hat, flick it at them, crack them. We were talking about using a fire extinguisher maybe to pick that up and swing it and crack somebody with that. But if you could also take the hose, if it's got something in there and you spray them down, that's projectile. Uh, I caught a video just recently about somebody getting held up 
at a gas station. They were pumping gas in their car and an armed robber came over to try and like, you know, carjack him or whatever. This guy, cool as a cucumber, just takes the gas and starts hosing this guy down. Why well, recommend that? No. Did it work? <laughs> like, it was incredible. <sighs> I guess. Um, projectile could be anything that you would pick up and throw at somebody. So like if you were at the beach throwing sand in somebody's eyes to kind of blind them and then crack them or run. Uh, you know, kicking dirt in somebody, leaves, anything, like any sort of debris, like whatever's like, um, if you're at your office desk and you got that little cup with either like paper clips or thumbtacks or whatever, that in somebody's face. A cup of hot coffee to like throw your hot coffee in somebody's face. So if you were sitting down at a restaurant and you picked up whatever's like the glass, the mug, the plate, the french fries, anything, anything that you could pick up in flame that would, again, like kind of, there's a thing called the OODA loop, which we'll discuss in another video. It's basically like distracting somebody. So while they're kind of like reorienting themselves, that's your chance to either attack or escape. Make sense? So I hope if you were tuning into this and you were like looking for like, you know, Kiyoshi's top five favorite like melee weapons that I didn't let you down. Um, more important than what I would use is what, how I would think in that type of scenario and how I encourage my students to think in that type of scenario. And every scenario is going to be different. So it's more important than what you would pick up is the way your brain thinks of like how you could pick up something for the range, the distance, the conditions. Again, all the other factors that come in other than just like, ah, and hit somebody with it. Make sense? That's fine, that's primal, and that'll work, but I want you guys to be like next level from that. Make sense? So quick review is we have our long range. That's gonna be something that's usually gonna be with two hands to kind of like keep somebody away, poke, swing like a baseball bat, crack them with, but again, from a little bit of a longer range. Mid range is gonna be something that you could probably pick up with one hand, and hopefully wield with one hand, maybe two, but ideally one. Close range is gonna be something that you pick up and hold like in your hand. Like even picking up your phone or, or a remote control and just cracking somebody with the corner of it. Uh, a coffee cup, whatever. The next category was our bladed, pointy, sharp type of things that you could either stick, stab, slash, basically cut with. And the next one was any sort of projectile, something that you would throw or fling or dump or pour or kick or swipe or whatever. Some sort of thing that you, again, not necessarily to stop them, but to distract them long enough again for you to either pick something else up and crack them with it or to run for it. So when it comes to melee weapons, whether you're thinking about like the Braveheart mob versus mob, if I saw that, I would run. I don't want to be in that. Uh, I'd rather be off with a different type of tool where, where I could take cover, be safe and, and whatnot. Um, if you're talking about like, you know, gangs in New York where like, again, mob versus mob, I don't want to be in that. But if you're talking about getting jumped outside your house or in a parking lot or, uh, you know, wherever, then, uh, you know, whether you're outmanned or out, outnumbered or like overpowered or, or whatever the situation is where you felt like you kind of had to resort to using a weapon, one, be sure that you're ready to use it. And uh, two, make sure that you're justified in doing so because there's a good chance that uh, if you survive the encounter that you're gonna have to explain it to, uh, to a judge. You know, there's a lot to be said for that. I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six. True, but uh, you know, your best bet is always run if you can, hide if you, if you can, and if all else fails, it's, it's not to, you know, you know, crush your enemies and be, be a William Wallace or Conan the Barbarian. It's, uh, you know, stun and run. That, that's my nickel's worth of free advice for you guys. And as always, please, please, please drop your comments below because, again, like every other video, you guys bring more to it than I do. I give you my ideas. I give you, like, you know, my thoughts on it. I try to help give you a little bit of an education, but the comments that come in from all the warriors that are like subscribed to this channel is just incredible. So by all means, put them down below. Have at it, man. That, get, get that conversation going. If you made it this far and you like what I'm teaching and preaching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. If you're loving it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you gotta have it, make sure you hit the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. If you're really digging it and you want more, you can find me on all social media platforms, especially Facebook and especially Instagram. Those are the ones I check most frequently at Five Elements Tactical. That's all I got for now, Warriors. So until our paths cross again, pray for the best, prepare for the rest. I'm Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training. Thanks for watching.